All right, we're going to do a quick review before we start getting into simple trinomial factoring. So if we want to expand, we want to distribute. We're going to distribute our x onto both of our terms, getting x squared minus 2x, and our 4 onto both terms, giving us a 4x and a negative 8, leaving us with the answer of x squared adding 2x subtracting 8. So where does that really, where does that lead us to? Well, what some people sometimes do, I didn't do it, but I absolutely like showing it when it's needed. If some people take this entire x and show their distribution like this x and multiply it by all of x subtract 2. And the 4, multiplying it by the x subtract 2. The reason behind this is simply to help compartmentalize and to show every single step one thing at a time. It all still works out to give us the exact same response. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some factoring. We're going to do some simple factoring. Now, before we get into the fact into the simple factoring, we need to again review what factoring is. So factoring is like division. It is not actually division because we're not getting rid of anything. We're just putting something out in front. So in this example, we want to look for what is our greatest common factor. What is something that is in both a 5x and x plus 2 and a 3 and x plus 2? Hopefully you see that an x add 2 is in both of them. So I can take that x add 2, divide in quotation marks, it out, and put it in front. But when, it's, when you divide, it's gone. And what we are left with is a 5x and a negative 3. Now you do have to be careful and put those brackets in there. So if we were to distribute this out again, it would actually start looking like this one. There's also another reason why I like showing this one or I want to show this one is for the simple reason that we need to start seeing a lot more connections and a lot more tie in before we get into some of the heavier stuff like complex trinomials. So our GCF in our second one, you can see that there's an X subtract four in both of them that there. You do not actually have to write that there's x subtract 4 or you don't have to write that the GCF. You just have to go ahead and do it. At the same time, there are many people that can actually skip this divide by x subtract 4. You still have to show your work, which means you can still go, oh, not x add, sorry, x subtract. Four. And what we would be left with is a 3x and a positive one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna learn the end stage of a binomial expansion, or we're gonna learn how to go from all of this to go back to this. So we're gonna go, essentially, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna start from here and go back to there. Why? Because it actually deals with a lot of concepts that we deal in, in pre-calc 20, as well as foundations 20. The practical applications for it come into a lot of graphing and doing a lot of different solving. It, yeah, it comes back to a lot of our solving, including what we had done in one of our previous units where we had talked about the solving of linear equations. So I'm going to start off with some steps 
Grade 10, I like giving these steps. Grade 11, you have to have these memorized. At the same time, you'll have, you'll be doing so many of them that you will have them memorized. If you don't have them memorized, it means that you weren't really putting in the effort to actually remember it. So here's our steps. First off, find the product. So this is steps for factoring. Find the product of the leading coefficient and the constant term. This is why when I start talking about definitions, we need to know what each of these things are. Do we need to know what the definition of them are? No, we need to know what they are and how to use them. Our leading coefficient is a number in front of our variable with the highest exponent. The constant term is the one without a variable. In this case, the number one is our leading coefficient and the number seven is a constant term. Now this will be our product for P. So I'm gonna set up a nice T-chart, our product. So the product of one and positive seven, that equals seven. Our second step is identify the coefficient in front of the X term. Well, the coefficient is a number in front of a variable. And in this case, we're finding in front of the x term. Well, this is our x term. This is an x squared term. It's two different, two different things. So our coefficient in front of the x is a negative eight. This will be our s. So s and eight. The phrasing that I will be using is product and sum, or p and s. If you hear anything other than p and s, you have a dirty mind. Step three, find two numbers that have the same P as number one and the same S as number two, which means we need to find two numbers that would have the same product. And those same two numbers have to have the same sum as here. The biggest thing that you'll always want to look for are the factors of your P. So the factors of seven are one, and seven. Now how, in what ways are we able to combine these two to give us a product of seven and a sum of negative eight? Well, if we have a positive one and a positive seven, positive one times positive seven gives us positive seven. Fantastic, that's exactly what we want. But a positive seven Adding, so because we want to find out the sum, adding a positive 7 is positive 8, which is not what we want. So that means that these numbers are wrong. But if we go with 1 and 7 again, what if we treat them as negative 1 and negative 7? Negative 1 multiplied by negative 7 is a positive seven. Fantastic, that's what we want. As well as negative one, add a sum with negative seven is negative eight, which is also what we want. These ones, a negative one and a negative seven are the numbers that we want. Now I'll show you some steps after this that are going to kind of cut all of our work off. I like showing these steps with simple trinomials just for the fact that you are going to have to know these remaining four steps after this. So I'm gonna go the long way here. After this, I'm gonna start showing you some simpler ways. So first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna break the X term into these two numbers from our third step. So we're going to break this negative 8x into these two numbers. So it would be negative 1 and negative 7 from our previous step. In this case, a negative 1x and a negative 7x. Because negative 8x is negative 1x and negative, and negative 7x. I'm just going to bring down my x squared. 
and bring down my seven. You may ask, well, does it matter whether I write it negative one, then the negative seven X? No, it does not. Sometimes it's gonna be a little bit easier to write it one way or the, or the other, but really it is not going to change anything. As long as you know your simple operations, you're gonna be fine. Okay, so we found it, we broke the X term. Now we're gonna do step five. We're gonna split the four terms in half. So we have one, two, three, four terms, we're gonna split them in half. Well, I'm not going, I'm gonna make sure that this negative stays with the seven. Okay, cut in half. That's an entire step. Some people don't follow this specific step method. I just like showing it one step at a time. It, it's something that makes sense to me. All right. So our sixth step, find the GCF and factor from the first two terms and then the last two terms. What that means is we have to find out our greatest common factor from these first two terms, factor it out. So what's our greatest common factor? We're an x squared and an x. Hopefully you see it is x. So I'm going to divide by x. Again, I'm not really dividing, it's like dividing. I'm gonna take that x, I'm gonna put it out in front. What am I going to be left with? x squared divided by x, I'm gonna be left with x. A negative one x divided by x is gonna be a negative one. What does this last two terms mean? Well, it means I need to do the exact same thing in these two terms. What is our greatest common factor between negative seven x and negative seven? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you this first part, which is wrong, and then I'm going to do it right. So first off, yes, you might be able to see that it's seven. So if I take out a seven, I'm taking out a positive seven. But if I take out that positive seven, negative seven X divided by seven will be a negative one X. Seven divided by seven is a positive one. The reason that this is wrong is because we have to look at our next term, our next step factor the common factor from the first half and the second half. There is nothing in common here. This is an X, this is an X subtract one, and this is a negative X add one. They are not the same thing. So the thing that we need to add in here that we need the same final factors. So what that means is instead of dividing by a seven, all I need to do is divide by a negative seven. Because that will change everything to actually be perfect. If I divide out that negative seven, negative seven X divided by seven is a positive X. Positive seven divided by negative seven is negative one. Now I have the same factors. I have an X subtract one and an X subtract one. So now that I have the same factor, I can use my last step. Factor the common factor from the first half and second half. I can factor my X subtract one out in front and all I'm left with is this X and this negative seven. just to check to make sure that our work is correct. We're going to expand. We're going to distribute x multiplied by x and x multiplied by negative seven. It'll be x squared and a negative seven x. One by x and one by, or negative one by x and negative one by seven would be a negative one x and a positive seven, which leaves us back at x squared minus 8x at 7, which is exactly what our first question is. So here is our way of checking. So if we have taken out 
the greatest common factor. One thing that we need to note. Is that the greatest common factor is always going to be our first step to factoring. Always. And if it's not a binomial, it could be a simple trinomial or a complex trinomial. We'll work with complex trinomials in the next section. The basic understanding of what a simple trinomial is, is first off, they're the easier ones to factor because they are simple. These ones have a very specific format, though. They are an ax squared plus bx plus c, where the a value equals 1. So that means this question. The a value is 1. The number in front of the x squared is 1. But what does that mean with this? Well, there's a 2 in front of our x squared. It's actually why I have this right above it. Our first step to factoring each and every single time is always look for our GCF, our greatest common factor, which means what is common between a 2x squared, a 2x, and a 12? It's a 2. We factor that 2 out in front. Now, you can technically write the divide by 2 part. With enough practice, you won't have to. All right, now let's go to our steps. So if you need to go and refer back to the steps, I'll just be speaking them out loud. Our first step, so after we've taken out that GCF, we're going to find out the product of the leading coefficient and our constant term. So 1 multiplied by negative 6 is negative 6. Identify the coefficient in front of our x term. In this case, negative 1. Step 3, find two numbers that would have the same product, the same sum as our chart, as our step 1 and step 2. So the trick is to always look at our factors of our p-value. 1 and 6, and 2 and 3. Now, if you take 1 and 6, Yes, we can multiply to give us 6, but there's no way that we can take 1 and 6, either positives or negatives. There's no way that we can combine the two of these together to give us a negative 1. The only things we could do is to use a positive 2 and a negative 3. Both conditions need to be satisfied in order for us to go further. Neg positive 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, and positive 2 adding negative 3 is negative 1. These two don't work. These ones do. So this question looks a little bit different than what we've done before, just because of the 2. Now the 2 is just going to stay out in front. You could technically ignore it at the beginning, because all we're going to be concerned with is what's inside the bracket. We're going to look at our simple trinomial. So what we need to do, our next step is break our x term down into these two numbers. So we're going to break it down into a, actually I was using purple, sorry. Pause of 2x and a negative 3x. So we're, we've broken this down into those two terms. We're going to cut these four terms in half. So I'm just going to kind of ignore this two for a moment. Grace common factor between x squared and 2x is an x. So I'm going to factor that x out in front. I'd be left with an x adding a 2. Again, you can technically write the divide by x. It just becomes more time consuming the more often you have to do it. If you start getting into the habit of, okay, my greatest common factor is x, I just put it out in front, and I'm left with an x subtract 2, you're going to be set up with a lot more success. Commonality between negative 3x and a negative 6, so that I can still get this x subtract 2 here. The only way I can do it 
is by factoring out a negative 3. Now be careful, you do need to actually write this negative 3. Just like in this question, I wrote the entire negative 7. I factor a negative 3 out of a negative 3x, I'm left with x. I factor a negative 3 out of a negative 6, I'm left with a positive 2. Now, I'm not going to forget about this 2 that's out in front. That's just going to stay out in front. Well, what's common between these two terms here is this x add 2. So I'm going to take the x add 2, put it in front. I'm left with an x, subtract 3. And I can't forget about the 2. If I want to check my work, I'm going to follow those same steps as what I had done with multiplication. Distribute the 2 only onto the first term, leaving me with a 2x at 4. After that, we then can distribute further. 2x onto x, 2x squared, 2x onto negative 3 is a negative 6x. 4 onto x, so 4x, so I can show that. 4 onto negative 3, it's negative 12, which leaves us with the final answer. 2x squared minus 2x minus 12, which is exactly what we started with. So this is the long and convoluted way for, for factoring. We're going to have to use it in our next section, but when we're talking about simple factoring, there is an easier way to factor. Now we can only use this when we have a simple trinomial. When we find our product in sum, what we just need to write down the two numbers that we found inside a pair of brackets with an x in the first location. What I mean is look at our answer and look at the numbers that we'd had done in our product in sum. A positive 2 and a negative 3. A positive 2 and a negative 3. A negative 1 and a negative 7. A negative 1 and a negative 7. This only works for a simple trinomial where we have a 1 in front of our x squared. This only works for a simple trinomial. I cannot emphasize that enough. So if we're going to do our product and sum, our P and S, all we have to do is get our numbers and then we're set. Our product of one and negative 16, well, I know that one and negative 16 is gonna be negative 16. A sum of negative six. Well, what two numbers are gonna have a product of 16 and a sum of negative six? One and 16, no, those will never add together to give you 6. Two and eight. Well, maybe we could get sixes. Other factors of 16 are four and four. Yes, they're not distinct. It's just we know that four times four is 16. But four and four will still never give you six. Two and eight are going to be the only numbers that we can use. Now the only way that we can get negative 6 is that we have a positive 2 and a negative 8. So let's check these numbers first. I'm perfectly fine with you checking these things in your head. You may... Yeah, there's, there's the opportunity that you can go straight from this part, write down your product sum chart, right here, go straight to your answer. If you don't show this, it shows me that, you're, that you don't understand what to do. Because this is going to become one of your key things to do every single time. With enough practice by grade 12, okay, I understand. But right now, grade 10, you're not able to do this without some actual assistance. Negative or positive multiplied by negative 8. Yeah, it's negative 16. 
That's our product. Positive two, add negative eight is negative six. Yeah, that's our sum. We're good. So when we factor this, all we need to do, make two sets of brackets, put a positive two and a negative eight, and just put X in the first location. X, X. If we want to check out that we're right, X add two, X subtract eight, X times X is X squared, X times negative eight is negative eight X, two times X is positive two X, two times negative eight is negative 16. Combine your like terms, and we're right back to where we started. Last example. Oh no, our number in front of our squared term isn't one, meaning it's not a simple trinomial. But our first step to factoring every single time is take out our GCF. You have to take out a GCF. It's going to make your life so much easier, so much less complex. I'll show you a few examples in our next section of why this is so essential. But if we factor out our greatest common factor, in this case, it's a negative five. That way, we have a one in front of our squared term. So here's all the work that you need to show. Product and sum. A product of 1 times negative 12. Yes, you do need to take 1 and multiply by negative 12. Sum of positive 4. Well, the only two numbers that would work, 1 and 12 don't work. 2 and 6 sure do. A negative 2 and a positive six. I write down my negative five, write two brackets, put negative two in, put positive six in, nope, not an X. In this case, it's an H. Be careful what the variable is. And there we're good. There's your work. That's all you need. Now go have fun.